cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything. And as the name of the channel implies, we're here to make all kinds of things. So I like to do artistic things. I like to make functional projects. And yet what we're doing today is something that I certainly never expected. Today, we're going to take on the dental industry. In one of my last videos, I had a viewer, GK Sora, ask me to try out this product called Plastimake. I'd never heard of it, so I went ahead and looked it up, and it's pretty cool. It's this plastic that's very low temperature plastic. You put it in boiling water, and then you're able to morph it around and shape it into whatever you want. And then when it cools down again, it becomes a hard plastic object. That sounded pretty cool, so I went on Amazon and I bought this stuff. And this is Instamorph. It's basically the exact same thing as Plastimake, but I was able to get a bigger package for the same price. So why not? So I bought this stuff. I didn't really know what I was going to do with it, but it sounded super cool, super useful. So I got the package and I was surprised reading the Amazon reviews to find that a lot of people are using this to make false teeth and basically make their own dental implants you know, rather than spending hundreds of dollars at the dentist. You get this whole package to make plenty of teeth for 10 bucks. And that was pretty crazy. Well, it just so happens that I used to have braces and since then I've been using the same pair of retainers for like 10 years. So I thought, why not try to make my own retainers with this Instamorph stuff? The first question we're going to want to ask is, is this safe? It does say here that it is non-toxic, but the packaging doesn't specify what this plastic is. But it does say that it melts at 66 degrees Celsius, which I realized is the same melting temperature as the PCL filaments in low temperature 3D printing pens like this 3Doodler Start. And I did a bit more research and sure enough, this is PCL plastic. It's a biodegradable polyester, and it's used in things like surgical implants that slowly biodegrade over time. So that seems safe. Now the surgical grade PCL that they use for bone grafts and things like that costs a heck of a lot more than this plastic here, but it says it's non-toxic. So at the very least, if I do get poisoned, I can sue the heck out of these guys and finally make some real money. Eh, seems safe enough. Let's make some retainers. The first thing I'm gonna do is prepare a nice clean surface to work on. I'm just gonna use this countertop here, but you could use a cutting board, something of that sort. Then we're gonna go ahead and heat up our water. I'm using this electric kettle here, but you can boil it on a stove, in a microwave, whatever. You just gotta get it up to 66 degrees Celsius or 150 degrees Fahrenheit, so not quite boiling. Now we're gonna go ahead and pour in a fair amount of this Instamorph plastic and we're gonna let it stay in there for about two minutes while it absorbs that heat and gets nice and soft. You'll notice that as it heats up, it turns from this kind of milky white into a clear plastic. And that's really useful in being able to tell when it's hot enough to be morphable. Now I'll go ahead and fish out the plastic and you'll notice all the pellets sort of clump together now. And I can just go ahead and squish it with my fingers. For these retainers, I want a nice, flat, thin sheet of this plastic. So I'm going to use another glass to kind of roll it out. Of course, you could use a rolling pin, but this is a nice, sturdy glass, so I don't have to worry about it shattering or anything. And it's doing the trick really well. Here you can see it's starting to turn that milky white again, which means it is hardening. So I'm just going to put it back in the water to make it soft again so I can keep working with it further. So we'll bring it out again and roll it a little bit more just to get it even more thin. And that's what's great about this stuff is you can just keep heating it up and reworking it, and it works really well. Of course, the thinner you get with this plastic, the quicker it will be to cool down again. So I'm gonna have to keep heating it up and keep working on this process in multiple stages. It probably would help to have a, a hot surface to work on to keep things soft, or maybe even to just use a heat gun. But it's really not too bad. It, it stays workable for long enough that I can make some progress every time. Here I'm trying to separate it into smaller pieces and I found that scissors are the best way to do that. I'm just cutting it down to size to make it more workable and once I have it as thin as I want, I'll cut out the general shape of the retainer that I need. So here we're doing a 
kind of half circle for my top teeth. And once I have that shape cut out, I'll heat it one more time, and then I'm gonna go ahead and actually try to fit it over my teeth. As you can see, I'm just gonna open my mouth wide and try to wrap it around my teeth and really push it into place and make it as tight of a fit as possible. And I know my face looks like I'm suffering, but it's really just that I'm struggling to keep my mouth so wide open. It's really not painful and it's definitely not too hot, but you definitely don't want to heat up the water too much. That could be a bit of a disaster, but it worked really well. And once I had the general shape, I'm gonna go ahead and start trimming it a bit more to get it more down to size. And then I can repeat the process, putting it back in the water, wrapping it over my teeth again, and I'll just keep doing that until I have a nice, perfect fit. So here's my first attempt, and as you can see, it fits pretty well. It's not totally snug, so maybe I wanna try it with a bit thicker plastic, but here's the bottom teeth, and you can't even tell I'm wearing them until I take them off, so that's pretty cool. It's pretty similar to the pair of retainers you'll get at a dentist's office. These are pretty great, but I've got plenty of extra plastic, and this stuff is reusable, so I'm gonna do a few more attempts and see if I can make a better pair. Here's my second attempt, and it also came out pretty well, except it got a little too thin, so here you can see it was kind of collapsing as I tried to take it off. And here are my remaining attempts. I ended up doing four tries for the top ones and two tries for the bottom pair, and the last one I ended up doing were with much thicker plastic. So it's not quite like the ones you'll get at a dentist's office, but I found that it was super sturdy, still pretty comfortable, and it just gave me a much tighter fit. But more importantly, it finally fulfilled my dream of having two large single teeth. Yeah, so as you can see, they look pretty good, they feel all right, and they work. So, hey, that was surprisingly easy. <sighs> <laughs> All right, guys, well, there you go. I made myself some retainers and they seem to work. They're definitely a tight fit and they're not super comfortable right now, but if I kept working to get the thickness and shape right, I feel like it would be a decent replacement. Now, I don't know if it's safe. Do I condone it? Not really. I would still go to a dentist if you could, but if you need a quick fix or just a backup pair of retainers like me. Hey, not bad. That said, I'm sure there are much better uses for this Instamorph plastic. So please leave me a comment if you have any ideas of what I should do with the rest of this stuff. Although I have a feeling most of the comments will be about how this video is gonna ruin my teeth forever and kill me. That's how it goes on YouTube. Go for it. Go for it. Well, I'll see you next time. Till then, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.